Hello, and thank you for joining us at CLS 2021. My name is Jonathan Kreisky. I'm the senior designer at Muzzy Lane Software. And today I want to tell you about uh, how active learning activities can help bolster your courseware and improve outcomes for students as they practice and use their skills. So author activities help students when you want students to practice their skills, apply what they've learned, or role play and experience. A lot of online courseware has struggled to engage students, and this has led to uh, uh, less retention and worse overall outcomes for students. Uh, and it's a problem that there have been a lot of attempts to solve of how you can auto assess students uh, and see whether they have uh, absorbed the material and whether um, uh, and where they are on that. So where we see the opportunity is to engage students in higher order thinking so that they're not just um, being asked to um, uh, say back what they've learned, but actually use the information in context, um, apply uh, the skills to a relevant context, um, getting at that higher order thinking. Um, our product, Muzzy Lane Author, our platform, came out of a uh, research grant from the Bill and Melinda, Melinda Gates Foundation, uh, looking into the opportunity to improve outcomes for non-traditional students with game-based learning. So we examined the educational pathway of a number of different kinds of students, traditional students and non-traditional students. These are students who might be, uh, might be uh, working full time, might be supporting a family, also students who might uh, have uh, uh, be differently abled in different ways. So looking at this path, we tried to focus on uh, isolating the micro learning opportunities of where game based learning could be helpful. And we found uh, a number of places uh, for both short and longer activities. Um, places like um, uh, in uh, uh, flashcards, matching activities, um, to larger role-playing activities and simulations. Simulations where you could put them in uh, the future workplace so that it could see how this activity was relevant to them. Um, even uh, much larger capstone activities where they're putting together a lot of different information from throughout the course. So looking at existing courseware, um, we uh, looked at where uh, these micro learning opportunities could fit into existing courseware. And we designed a set of templates around those different opportunities. These are five to 15 minute activities, sometimes a little bit longer, and they're designed to seamlessly fit into existing courses uh, and uh, importantly, be easy to author. Um, these templates are content agnostic, so, uh, and they require no coding, so they can be used in all different um, uh, course areas, and they can be created um, by uh, uh, teachers, um, uh, uh, instructional designers, um, and uh, they integrate um, to, uh, uh, the learning management system of your choice. So they all have LTI integration and because they work on responsive web, they don't require any applications or plugins um, and can be used on any device in any location. The other thing we wanna put front and center is uh, equity and, um, and accessibility. So everything you're gonna to see today is um, fully keyboard accessible. We've taken into account um, things like color contrast throughout, everything you see can be spoken. Um, we meet or exceed all WCAG 2.0 AA guidelines. And as we come out with new features, uh, we are always trying to make sure we, we uh, give a comparable uh, experience to all, all different kinds of learners. So uh, what are we talking about when we're talking about these activities? Uh, they could be role-playing activities. These activities, um, uh, allow a student to experience a high stakes uh, 
uh, experience in a low stakes way. It lets them see the repercussions of their action. Um, it lets them uh, simulate real world models. So, uh, you know, you can play as uh, the CEO of a corporation, or you could be the, uh, the head of the uh, uh, WWHO and see how um, the cause and effect of uh, uh, your actions play out uh, in these simulated real world models. Um, Self-assessments, right? Are you introverted? Are you extroverted? Um, a lot of these course materials uh, uh, are uh, a lot of institutions have older course materials that need to be updated, have these great pithy self-assessments where, um, uh, but that, that no longer work uh, with uh, online courseware. This can help you update them. And it lets students see where they fall uh, on uh, the spectrum of the other students who've taken it as well as globally. Um, interactive media, right? So. Um, our studies have shown that videos a lot of times uh, will become much more um, impactful and the information will be retained uh, much more if the student is asked questions uh, during a video. Um, and further, uh, we've recently expanded this to an audio um, uh, template, which for music listening or podcasts, uh, allow you to check in with your students during uh, a video or audio piece uh, to see if they are understanding uh, the information. Um, matching exercises. These let you um, practice over and over the, um, uh, the information. And so how do you create these, right? Um, there are a few different options. You can uh, build it yourself because our tools require no coding. Um, we support all of our partners with training and support and have a number of uh, self onboarding materials to help you build these. Um, the second option is we build it uh, with you. Um, and third, we've been partnering with uh, McGraw Hill Education uh, and they have uh, created thousands of these activities which um, can be purchased uh, individually or as part of a course. Um, you don't need to use Connect in order to um, get these activities. And if you're interested in seeing some of those activities that McGraw has created, please feel free to contact us afterwards and I'd love to um, uh, show you their extensive library of these activities that they've created. So all of these different um, activity types fit within your courseware and I uh, and are very easy to build. Um, and I'd like to go ahead next and show you some of these activities and talk about some of the partners we're working with to develop these. So uh, first, I'm just going to show you um, the uh, smart scene uh, activity. In this activity, uh, activity type. In this activity, you are um, playing an elder uh, living consultant and you are working with uh, the family of Mary to find her an apartment that fits um, with her uh, mobility. So we're looking at these two different apartments and we're looking at the layout and information about them and we're going to go ahead and uh, review these different materials uh, and now we're going to go and uh, go to the um, the house, uh, Mary's house and speak with her children to discuss uh, the living options. What I really like about this activity is uh, you take a position and then you have to defend your position. Uh, so if I uh, choose 297 Commonwealth Ave, I then have to say why I think that's the best choice. Next, I'd like to show you our smart video template. Uh, this is a McGraw-Hill activity on liver function and uh, as you can see, um, it's gonna be playing this video. And as we go along, uh, we're gonna be asked questions um, to check our comprehension. And now, um, and now let me go ahead and show you um, the smart audio version of this. 
this is with one of my favorite uh This is one of my favorite uh, pieces of music, La Boheme. And uh, as we play, you can see the different, um, the different uh, sections and subsections of the music. Um, and uh, as the piece progresses, um, uh, Mimi and Rodolfo are going to sing their uh, aria and, uh, and we can see this build. And I really like this example because um, I think it, it shows the way our company has responded to the needs of our partners. Um, McGraw uh, came to us and said that there was a music listening uh, course that uh, had all these materials um, that were not accessible. They were built using Flash and they needed a solution. So we, within six months, uh, built out this template and there are now hundreds of these activities um, using this template. Uh, for the music listening guide courses, um, and it's being used as well for uh, podcasts and lectures. Next, I want to show you uh, a simple matching activity. Uh, we're going to see how well you know your president. So we mi mix them up, and uh, and here I'll just show you. I can use my uh, keyboard here to. Uh, to uh, make my choices. And uh, we'll see here that I am uh, not gonna get everything right. I'm gonna get everything wrong. Um, but you'll see a, a, a breakdown of uh, where the student is succeeding and where they're failing uh, and uh, students can play these to to practice and uh, and check their skills. And I also want to show you smart form. Um, so here we've got personality dimensions, and we are going to be taking this survey uh, to learn about ourselves. We've got a simple Likert scale here. Right, and here's a breakdown of uh, where we fall on these different axes. Turns out I am moderately conscientious, who knew? Um, so those were our smart scene, smart video, uh, align and smart form templates. I wanna spend the most time today though, talking about our smart chat template, which um, I think is uh, our most powerful one. And to do that, uh, I want to show you an activity that was created in partnership with Education Design Lab. Um, Education Design Lab uh, has an existing curriculum uh, through Visible, um, where uh, a skills-based curriculum, and in this one, they wanted a way to auto-assess students' critical thinking skills. So uh, students' ability to gather and assess relevant information, identify patterns, question assumptions, and draw conclusions. Um, and how do you do that uh, with, uh, by auto-assessing? It's a difficult thing to do. Um, we built this in partnership uh, with them. Um, and I'm gonna walk you through this activity because I think it's pretty great. Um, so we've got our help here, um, including you know, video help everywhere if you want it. And, uh, but let's get going. So we're going to be uh, talking with different stakeholders and uh, here are the people we're gonna be talking with, the marketing director, CFO, or museum director, and social media manager. And the problem is that this museum is struggling. So we've been hired as an outside consultant to figure out why the Springfield Museum of Design uh, is struggling. So first we're talking with the marketing director and we're gonna ask him some questions um, to try and figure out what's going on. Um, Aaron's gonna tell us, so, so here's our notepad, um, which we're gonna record our, our thoughts on. Um, Aaron's gonna tell us that um, we've been hired, that they are hoping that this new um, exhibit of theirs Shoes Through History is hopefully going to kick off their new marketing campaign. And we're being brought in to figure out 
how um, uh, how they should market uh, the uh, the exhibit. So I'm going to go ahead and skip ahead uh, to a later conversation in the activity where we're talking with Susan Rhodes, um, who is the chief financial officer of the museum. Uh, so uh, uh, they're giving us an uh, uh, an article on uh, how museums are generally um, supported. And if we look here, we've got some information on the Museum of Design. We're being asked some MC multiple choice questions um, to, uh, uh, on, on the um, article here. Uh, and here we also have an accessible table on the way in which the Museum of De Design gets funding. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, make sure to ask uh, uh, them about the earned income because I can see that earned income is pretty low and that's how uh, museums generally make uh, the majority of their um, uh, of their money. Uh, so here we're going to ask about earned income sources. Okay, I'm going to skip ahead one more time, uh, actually twice more, uh, to um, the third uh, and final conversation uh, with uh, Joseph Johnson, the social media manager, who has prepared three different marketing campaigns for Shoes Through History. Uh, campaign one, which is gonna target uh, ages 65 and older. Uh, and uh, we've got campaign two, which is targeting the Latinx community um, with family fun days, or campaign three, uh, which is a selfie DJ dance party to target the local uh, college population. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and ask uh, Joseph about the city of Springfield because uh, we need to talk about how, uh, spo spoiler alert, increasing memberships is the best way uh, to increase uh, earned income. Um, and uh, so figuring out uh, your demographics is gonna be very important. Uh, just to go back here, I've been um, taking notes on the different people I've, I've met. Um, and uh, after asking Joseph about his hometown of Springfield, um, he's going to ask us to make a decision uh, as to which uh, campaign to go with. So have all the information I need and we'll make our decision. Okay. Um, so uh, we make our decision and then we come to the executive boardroom where we now again have to defend it. Now, um, I'm gonna skip ahead to the end screen now. So here's campaign one, two or three, uh, and then they're gonna tear apart uh, why, why we made the decision. Uh, so if we do that, we'll see that some of them uh, disagree. And finally, you know, here we've reached the end of the activity. Uh, in this playthrough, I chose uh, the third campaign, which wasn't the right one, but I was able to successfully defend it um, and, uh, and, and succeed. Um, what's great here is we've auto assessed the different uh, uh, learning objectives of the, the uh, course, uh, the critical thinking course, whether a student is able to, uh, was able to gather and assess relevant information, whether they were able to identify patterns, question assumptions, or draw conclusions. Um, and, uh, and, uh, this information, uh, is able to integrate with, um, uh, the, the visible, uh, curriculum also would be able to go into, um, Blackboard, Canvas, et cetera. Uh, and the student here would be able to export their, uh, their score as well. Um, so I hope this has given you a sense of how uh, of the um, different kind of templates that we uh, have uh, in Muzzy Lane Author. Uh, during the session this afternoon, um, we're going to show you uh, how uh, you can very quickly and easily build an activity um, within you know five minutes uh, to build something simple. Um, but uh, please join us. Uh, we'd love to hear all of your questions.